Hello, and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we'll be talking about trivia related to video game music. Over the years, video games have weaved their way into the mainstream. They pop up in other kinds of media, in news reports, and sometimes even sporting events. Olympic gymnast Elsa Garcia built her Olympic qualification routine around Zelda music, which she demonstrated at the London 2012 Summer Olympics. The music Garcia performed to was a violin medley of various Zelda songs by popular musician Lindsay Stirling. Garcia is actually an avid gamer, and settled on Zelda music because of memories playing Ocarina of Time with her sister. Although her performance was impressive, Garcia unfortunately didn't make it to the final rounds in the 2012 Olympics due to a hand injury, which limited her movements. She did, however, earn herself a silver medal one year later at the 2013 Summer Universiad in Russia. Moving from classical violin to something a little bit more laid back, let's talk about the hip-hop subgenre grime. Originating in London in the early 2000s and gaining popularity through pirate radio, Grime took inspiration from UK garage, dancehall, and hip-hop of the 90s. However, it seems the first ever Grime-style track was actually created for a 1994 video game. The Boss 2 music from Wolverine Adamantium Rage on the Super Nintendo is very reminiscent of these more modern creations. CSEs, they want COD on the PS3. I'm like DP or PE or okay, KO. The track's producer, Dylan Beale, was previously part of a jungle duo known as Rude and Deadly. Beale told SBTV, I used to listen to all of the music which influenced Grime, and I took this in as an influence for my music for the games I worked on. If you listen to the rest of the soundtrack, I was aiming for a West Coast hip-hop vibe and trying to be a little bit more funky because Acclaim were American. Speaking of UK music, development of the Beatles rock band has a few interesting secrets as well. Every individual Beatles digital track that was sent to Harmonix while making the Beatles rock band was a low-fidelity copy imprint with static. This was a security measure to assure that the Beatles music wouldn't be sampled by other artists in the event that the recordings were leaked. These low-quality copies were used throughout development, but replaced with high-quality versions towards the end of production. Another noteworthy detail is that, because all of the Beatles' master recordings were originally recorded on 4-track and 2-track equipment, multiple instruments shared the same tapes. So, in order for the music to work with Rock Band, Giles Martin, son of the George Martin who oversaw the original production of most of the Beatles' music, had to spend months using digital filters to separate each instrument into new, single tracks. This was necessary to make sure that each instrument could be stopped or altered in-game without affecting the other instruments. When talking about video game music, it's hard not to talk about the stellar soundtracks for the Streets of Rage franchise. Series composer Yuzo Koshiro has stated that the inspiration for his tracks came from his time spent visiting the local nightclubs of Tokyo. The music's admiration from within America and Europe is also unsurprising, as this was Koshiro's intention. In an interview with Red Bull Music Academy, Koshiro stated, When we did Streets of Rage, it was around the time the Mega Drive started selling very strongly in North America and Europe. I knew they loved club music, so I thought if I could put this into game music, then they'd be really happy. I think that was the first time I composed music with the overseas market in mind above the Japanese market. Another interesting piece of music trivia surrounds 1989's Robocop for the Nintendo Game Boy. The title was developed by Ocean Software, a British-based company and one of the biggest developers and publishers through the 80s and 90s, in a particularly bizarre turn of events. The game's theme song, created by Jonathan Dunn, was later used in commercials by the UK washing machine company Ariston. The unaltered track can be heard clearly in the background with simple lyrics over the top. On and on and Ariston. And now, as usual, it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we'll be taking a look at some trivia from the Platinum Games Metal Gear spin-off, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. During the 2016 presidential campaign in the US, people started to notice eerie similarities between the then-Republican candidate, Donald J. Trump, and one of the final bosses of Revengeance named Armstrong. Not only is this character a very wealthy businessman, but he also plans to become US President. However, the most coincidental moment is when he claims he will make America great again. 
Keep in mind that the game was released in 2013, a full three years before Trump's campaign adopted this slogan. With that said, Ronald Reagan did use a very similar slogan back in the 1980 presidential campaign, Let's Make America Great Again. We'll restore hope and we'll welcome them into a great national crusade to make America great again. And if you want more facts, check out this amazing video on the left of the screen, or the other amazing video on the right. The choice is yours. Don't forget to waltz on over to the subscribe button to keep up with new videos in the future, and you could even be a cool cat and cha-cha slide your mouse over the like button and give it a slap.